Hey guys, it's Carrie with Mama Dare City DIY, and I really want to thank y'all for tuning in today. It's Friday, so you know what that means. It's time for another fun DIY, and this Friday's video is no exception. Look what I've got for you here. I've got the matching camper to the vintage truck video from last week. I know I had such a crazy, overwhelming response to that cute truck, so I thought I would show you exactly how to start from scratch and make the camper. Now, if you're not able to get your hands on the camper from the Dollar Tree that they had at Christmas time, no worries. I actually provide the templates for you, which I'll put a link to down below. Just click that link that says send me the camper template and it's going to come straight to your inbox. Okay, y'all, speaking of being excited, I've got some fun and exciting news to share with you. My channel has recently passed 1 million views. 1 million views. Like, my mind is just totally blown. I can't even believe that I started this channel back in August of last year. And here it is, January, and it's just, it's just going over so crazy. I'm truly blessed and humbled. And I just want to say a huge thank you to everybody that's made this possible. And to show y'all that I truly appreciate your support, I've teamed up with Surebonder to bring you a giveaway. So one lucky winner is going to win a Surebonder Ultimate Crafters Kit that is just going to blow your mind. So you know Surebonder is my favorite glue gun on the planet. I love their glue sticks and everything that this company offers. So to enter the giveaway, you'll find the details below. So just Follow those rules carefully. It's super easy to enter, and one lucky winner is just going to be very, 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 very lucky whenever they see their prize package. So keep watching if you want to know how to make this, and if you're not already subscribed to my channel, be sure to hit that subscribe button down below. That way you don't miss a tutorial the minute that it's uploaded. And now, I usually upload on Friday evenings. You will get a notification to join us for a live chat and a video premiere where we all watch it together at the same time and we chat and y'all we just have such a blast so if you've never done a live premiere with me you are totally missing out so be sure to turn those notifications on and make sure it says all notifications so keep watching this video if you want to learn how to make this and again thank y'all so much for your support happy DIYing Okay y'all, so the first thing that we're gonna do to get started is to print off our template. Now you're gonna find the template link down below in the description box. So just click that link and enter your email address and then it's gonna come automatically to your inbox. Now be sure to click that confirm button because that's actually going to, you're not gonna get the template unless you click confirm. So after you click confirm, just save it to your computer or print directly from that screen. So after you get it all printed to the size that you want, and this is just a standard eight and a half by 11 piece of paper, we're gonna take our scissors and we're gonna cut this out. Okay, so at first you're just going to cut out the outline. So once you get your outline done, we're just going to take a piece of foam board, and I did pick up this foam board at the Dollar Tree. Now, I will be honest, Dollar Tree's foam board is only a dollar, so their quality is not that great. It's a little bit wavy, and I'm not sure if the camera picks that up. So, if this is something that you're going to want to keep around, I highly suggest paying a couple of bucks more, because honestly, you could get both sides of the camper as well as the truck. So, you could, you know, in theory, do the truck and the trailer out of one sheet of foam board. So I do highly suggest that you pay a little bit more for a quality piece of foam board. But today we're just gonna use this one from Dollar Tree. So after we get our outline cut out, we're just gonna take our template and put it on our poster board and trace around it. Now, you're going to need two copies of this, and they're also going to need to be mirror imaged. So, instead of printing this off again and rotating it, I'm just going to simply flip over my page and use the back side. Okay, so once you've gotten both your front and your back done, you can either outline this in a Sharpie, or you can just go straight in with your X-Acto knife and just cut now, I do suggest using a new blade for your X-Acto knife 
And y'all look, my, my blade is so ratty. I honestly need to just buy a whole new setup, but it's one of those things I always keep forgetting to do. Now, the, one of the tricks to cutting through foam core that I like to do is just to cut through the very top layer first. And go all the way around before I move on to the next layer. So after you've gone around one time, then just take your knife and go back over again and push all the way through to that second layer. Okay, so now you're just going to repeat this process for your other piece. Okay, so I've got my left and my right side cut out for my camper. And if your lines are not perfectly straight, y'all don't worry about it. Once you get all of your top on and everything painted, you are not going to notice those itty bitty little details. So don't, don't worry if, you know, you're like, oh, mine's not totally straight. Who cares? Okay, so after you get your outline done, now we're going to cut our accessory pieces. Okay, so now that I've got my little accessory pieces cut out, I've gone ahead and cut two sets of these out of my foam core. Now I'm just going to take my glue gun and glue these down on both sides. Admit, I did use just plain poster board at first, and it didn't stick up as much as I wanted it to. I kind of wanted it to have a little bit more dimension. So that's why I decided to go back in with my foam core over the top, and I think that looks much nicer. Okay, so now we'll just flip it over and do the other side. Okay, y'all, so I've got all my pieces cut out now. Now I'm ready to cut my cross pieces. Now these are actually going to hold your camper together, and it's what's gonna help to make it set upright. So I decided to use the paint sticks, just like I used in the truck tutorial. Now, in case you missed the truck tutorial, I will put a link to it down below, as well as a card up right now, so you can check out that video because it is going to match this camper and it is super freaking cute, let me just tell you. So the paint sticks I picked up from, I believe, Lowe's, and they were 10 for a dollar. And I'm because I want my truck and my camper to match, I'm going to cut my cross pieces for the camper the same width as I did the truck, and that was at three and a half inches. So I'm just going to cut roughly I'm going to cut roughly nine pieces out of my paint sticks. Okay, so I've got all nine of my pieces cut. And I do have the edges sanded. Now you will have a little piece left over. Don't throw this away because this is actually going to be what we use to jack up our trailer so it doesn't fall down. So be sure to hold on to those little pieces. Okay, so now let's start gluing our pieces on. So we're just going to take our glue gun and put some glue on both ends. I'm gonna start my first piece right behind the wheel. And you'll see why in a minute. And I guess I should have waited to put that one on, so I'm just gonna rub that glue off. I'm gonna put them all on one side first. we're ready to glue on the other side. Now, 
Just kind of get your bearings here and make sure that you know where you're going to start gluing. Okay, we're going to give this just a second to cool. Okay, y'all, this, there's only one step left to do, and that is to take our poster board and cover up all of this here. Now, make sure that when you put your poster board on, you want the shiny side up. When you start Mod Podging, for some reason, the shiny side does kind of give it a barrier. If you use the not shiny side, it may, your paper may wrinkle up on you. So, that's why I always say, do the shiny side up. I'm going to go ahead and grab another one of my glue sticks here. And I am using the Surebonder Clear Sticks. These are high and low temp. And, of course, I'm using my Surebonder glue gun that is cordless. I'm totally loving that cordless gun. And, of course, I decided to cut my paper just a little bit thicker, or a little bit wider. I'm sorry, not thicker, wider. Just because I want to be able to trim it off. If, if for some reason I don't have everything like plumb and square and level, then if I cut my paper exact, then it's really going to be a nightmare to try to fix it. So, just cut it too big and trim off the excess. So, now we're going to flip it over. And we're going to start our poster board just underneath this part here. So we'll just put a little glue. You may have to notch out where your fender well sticks over just a little bit. And that's okay. And I'm actually going to go back and put a little bit on this part. Now, one thing I would suggest that I did not do on camera this time, but I did do it in the video for uh, um, the truck, is to go back in and reinforce with your glue gun all of your your weld, or not your welds, you know, whatever this is. All of your seams, I guess. You don't really have to, and I don't think it's going to go anywhere. I mean, it's not like somebody's actually going to be riding in this thing. But, just to be on the safe side, go back in and put a little extra glue there. Okay. And I will tell you that the camper is a lot easier to do. There's hardly any effort involved at all. So if you plan on making the camper and the truck, then just to get your feet wet, you, I would suggest starting with the camper because it's such an easy project. So I'm just gonna glue a little at a time and let my glue cool. And I'm just going to roll it up. Okay. I'm actually not going to cover the whole thing. But you totally can. And that one piece of poster board cut long ways is actually enough just to go all the way around. 
and see this is what I'm talking about. See how this is not level? It's not even. Once I cut this off, you're not even going to know the difference. But I have all of this wiggle room to not have to worry about trying to be perfect. Okay, so I think this is probably dry. So now I'm just going to take my box cutter or my X-Acto knife and just trim it off. Okay, now it's time to trim the other side. Now I will tell you that when you're trimming the cardboard versus the wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, you might be a little, um, you might get a little gougy with your razor blade. That's okay because once we get this Mod Podge really good and painted and sanded, you won't even notice this. But it is a little bit easier to nick with, you know, when you use the cardboard template. So just be careful. Right, so there is our little camper. Now, before we Mod Podge it on here, I am going to glue my little cross piece on. And my, you wanna make sure that when you glue it down, you glue it down to where your, uh, your ruler was. That way it has something to set on. And I'm just going to hold this down until it cools. All right. There she is. Isn't she cute? Okay. Y'all, the hard part is done. Now it's time for the fun part, and that is painting. The very first thing we're going to do, though, before we get started with that is going to be to Mod Podge the whole thing. I do want to create a protective barrier, and I do want to have these edges nice and sealed so that I can take my fine grit sandpaper and just sand off those edges to make it smooth. So I'm going to put roughly three layers of Mod Podge, and you're going to let them dry in between each one. So let's do that really quick, and then we'll come back and start our paint job. Okay, so my Mod Podge is all dry, and I ended up putting three coats on here. Now, you want to make sure that you let it dry overnight so that it's nice and, and firm because you don't want to be sanding if your Mod Podge is not totally dry. So then I've taken my 320 grit sandpaper, and I've just sanded down all of the edges here. And you can see, you would never look at this and tell that it's cardboard. Now, I did go ahead and Mod Podge underneath the bottoms here as well as on the insides of my tires here because I really want this to be nice and protected. Okay, so now it's ready to give our paint color. Now I'm gonna paint the whole thing with my white paint. and It's totally up to you if you wanna prime it first. When I do the Mod Podge, you don't necessarily have to prime it, but you can totally prime it first if you want to, or you can just go ahead and go right in with your paint. So as soon as I get my my base coat down, we will be back and we will start laying down some color. So stay tuned. All right, y'all. So I've gone ahead and gotten all of my primer put on here. And I've also taken my pencil and outlined where I want my separation to be. Now I'm going to do the top part of the camper white, which I've already laid down. I used that as my, my white paint also acted as my primer as well as my initial coat. And the bottom part here, I'm going to paint that pretty ocean, um, ocean breeze from Craft Mart here. Now I'll give you a little hint, an easy way that I use to draw the, the rims for the tires is to use the bottom of one of your craft paints and just kind of line it up on the center and then take and draw around it. And to get the smaller one, I use a water bottle cap. And you can just center that up and draw around that too. And that's it. This is really an easy paint job. Now I will do just like I did with the truck and add in some highlights and some low lights and some shadows. And of course we'll finish it off using our black outline. But this is a super, super easy paint job. So let's get into the colors. Now it was an overwhelming response to what color should I paint the, the camper. 
I asked on my community page on YouTube if we should paint it turquoise to match the truck or if I should do a completely different color and maybe do red. And everybody, for the majority, said turquoise to match the truck. So I will be using those same colors here. Now, if by chance you do want to use reds, you just want to use three different shades of red. And I do happen to like the Craftmark brand of paints. So the main color that we're going to be using is this Ocean Breeze. So I'm going to go ahead and lay some down. I'll probably need a lot more than that. And I'm going to use this Tropical Rain. And also, this one is actually a folk art color, and it's called Aqua. Maybe it's called Vintage Aqua. Minted Aqua. That's what it is. I got black paint on it there. But it's called Minted Aqua from Folk Art. And I'll just lay a little bit of both of those colors down. I don't need a whole lot of these because there's really not much of these colors that are going to be needed. But I do like to add in just a little bit of color just so it's not just flat. Now, I'm also going to use some gray colors. Now, and for these colors, I'm going to be using the Waverly Chalk Paints in Silver Lining, as well as Elephant. And I'll just put a little of those on my plate as well. Now, the black that I'll be using at the end is just a black Craftmark paint. But that's going to be our very last step. Okay, so let's lay down some turquoise, or ocean breeze, I should say. I'm going to do one side at a time. I won't, watch, I won't make you watch both sides on camera, but I am going to do this one side. Now, kind of the, the starting point that I like to use is right here, right underneath our little window here. I just like to go right along that line. And I don't really want it to come up any further than the, the little window part here. So that's kind of where I base, where I'm going to put my line at. And I'm just using a kind of a flat brush. And to get your line straight, you just want to take your flat brush and just sort of drag it. Okay, so now that I've gotten most of the outline done, or most of the turquoise done, I'm going to take a little smaller round brush and just sort of get in to these little places that I'm going to need to cut in. I'm just going to take my brush, and you don't have to worry about going all the way to the very end, or all the way to the white part that it touches. Just get as close as you can. And now let's very carefully do the inside of our window here. Now we're going to be painting the cutout gray. I think I'm going to paint it gray. Either gray or black, I haven't decided yet. So you really don't have to be too careful because you are going to be cutting in that one just like you are your tires. Okay, now I'm going to let this dry and then I'm going to go back and put a second coat over this turquoise before we start painting in our shadows. Okay, so I've got my second coat of my Ocean Breeze drying right now, 
And while that's drying, I'm going to go in and put my shadows on my white part here. So I'm going to go in first with some of my silver lining. I'm just going to kind of hit the edges a little bit. Now, if for some reason you get too much, you can always add in a little bit of white. I'll go ahead and get that out. And then you can actually blend those two together. And I'll show you what I'm talking about. This is just another technique that you can use. So I've got my silver and my white on here together. And then I'll just go in with those two and just blend those in like that. Isn't that a neat technique? So silver on one side, white on the other. And just brush it up. Now I want to take some more of that silver lining and just go around the edges. of my windows and again always go back in with your base color to help soften oops you can tell I didn't quite have my turquoise dry that's what I get but that's okay it's just paint we'll just paint over it There we go. I'm going to actually take the darker gray and go under the bottom here just so that the, because naturally the shadows are going to be darker underneath the bottom than it will on the top. So of course you want that shadow to be just a slight bit darker. And again, my turquoise is not dry. So, just make sure that your turquoise is dry. Y'all know I'm impatient. Patience is not one of my virtues. Maybe I'll go in with a smaller brush. Okay, can you pick up those shadows there? Okay, so now I want to go in with my darker gray. I'm going to mix in some of my silver lining in with it. Just want to go right underneath there. And then add in a little more white. I want it to be a little bit darker. I don't want it to be a huge, huge contrast. But I do want it to be darker. Okay, you see that? Now I want to take some more of my dark gray, my elephant color, and I want to move in to my gray. And going back in and picking up just a little bit of the turquoise. Just to make that shadow as well. I'm 
If you remember, whenever we did the truck, I actually mixed in together a little bit of the turquoise and the elephant together, and that actually gave me that dirty turquoise color. And then we'll hit the edges too. And don't be afraid to play around with your paint. Paint is not gonna hurt you. Paint is one of the most forgiving mediums that there is because guess what? If you don't like it, you just paint over it. So I'm just trying to figure out where my, my shadows would be. Okay, now I wanna go back in with some more of my silver lining color. I just want to hit those edges. Just want to dirty those edges up a little bit. Not much because I am going to go back in and trace everything with my black. And we'll take a little bit more of our elephant. And just sort of blend those in. Okay, I think that looks pretty good. Now I want to add in a little bit of highlight. So I'm going to take in some of my lighter blues. And just think about where the, the shiny part would be. And if you'll always use whatever your base color is to smooth that down, That'll kind of help soften where those transitions are made. Okay, I think I like it. Now I am going to go back in and add in some white highlight. But not much, just a touch. So we'll put some on this side of the door. I just like to add a tiny little bit of white. It's amazing what that one little pop of bright color can do for a project. All right, now I'm gonna go in next with my light gray and I'm going to use a small brush to get inside our tire here. And now let's pick a little bit of our elephant and blend those two out. Pretty easy, huh? As long as you keep your brush wet, you should be a-okay. That's going to really help blend those colors together.
All right, so let's go in and do, I think I'm going to do the inside of this one black because I looked at my truck and the truck actually I did black already. So I think I'm going to use black. My initial thought was to do gray, but after looking at the truck that I did, I have changed my mind. I'm going to pick up my elephant and my silver lining and just sort of blend those together, just like we did the wheel. So now I'm going to pick up my handy dandy little angled brush and let's paint this tire. All right, now the last thing to do before we outline is going to be to put the little um, white wall on our tire, but I will have to wait for the black to dry because I don't want that smearing. So let's go ahead and outline. I'm going to use the same angled brush. And remember, just like we did with our um, truck, we're going to take our angled brush and lay it on its side and ever so lightly use the outside of that brush just to outline. Let, we can't get into our little camper here, but we don't have a knob on it, so let's just paint a little door handle. How cute is that? Oh my goodness, isn't that adorable? So now I'm going to paint this side exactly the same way as I did this one, and all that we have to do here is just to paint this one little strip and then I'm going to paint the bottom the turquoise as well and then we'll go back in with the back. Now I will take some of my grays and highlight the top just slightly, not much. Now I will tell you it looks like this is super dark but once this dries, this is actually going to blend in together. The colors do look a lot darker when they're wet. So if your colors happen to come off a little bit dark, don't freak out until it's totally dry. And if you still don't like it once it's dry, feel free to just go back in with some white and feather those edges. Okay, so I'm going to get the rest of this painted. And when we are done, I will be back to show you the finished project. All right, y'all, here it is. How freaking cute is this? When you pick this up and look at it, you would never know that this is actually made out of cardboard. I mean, it is just absolutely precious. And honestly, I'm probably going to go back and paint me a, uh, a little license plate here. I'm not quite sure what I want to put on it yet. I'm just going to kind of Kind of think about it for a little bit, but don't worry. I promise I'm going to share all of the accessories with you that I plan to make. And, and I'm also going to show you how I decorate this for Valentine's Day. So be sure to be on the lookout for that video as well. I hope to get that put up this weekend. So make sure you've got your notifications turned on. That way you do not miss that video. But I'm so in love with this little camper. It's honestly hard to tell which one is my favorite, the truck or the camper. Y'all, I'm going to have such a blast decorating this cute little truck and camper for all of the seasons. I have got so many things planned. I've got some little accessories I'm going to make for it. I mean, it's like my own little miniature dollhouse. 
in a truck and can't perform. I can't even begin to tell you how excited I am for this. All right, y'all, that does it for today's video. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up because that would mean the world to me. And until next time, happy DIYing, y'all.